Hey, well, welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to do a very quick video on this chilly January morning about how to stay motivated, how to keep training, how to get the sessions done, how to structure and plan your training and your year really to make sure we get into those lovely summer months fit and fast, raring to go with some exciting events lined up for us to have a good go at. So the first thing I would say is have a look at your year ahead. Work out what your targets are, work out what you want to achieve, work out your big goals for the year and start to think about that. Is it a first half or full marathon, maybe a 10k, maybe a triathlon, half Ironman, 100 mile bike ride, whatever it is, think about what your challenge and your target is and then start thinking about what and where, where you're going to do it, when, when does it fit in with the family, when does it fit in with work or holidays, which event you're going to do and then start trawling the event pages to find one that suits you. If you're looking for a fast race, is it generally a fast course? If you're looking for exciting or amazing views, is it somewhere beautiful? Start finding that, that perfect event for you. And once you've found it, get it on the calendar. Sign up quick as you can, pay the money, get the entry spot, and that's one way to immediately hone in your focus on where you want to be and what you want to be doing. So make sure you've given yourself enough time to train for this event and start thinking that if it's something like a half or a full marathon, maybe six or eight weeks before that, you want to schedule, say, a half marathon before you're full or a 10k before your half and maybe six or eight weeks before that something a bit shorter start to get those key markers in your calendar just small goals to aim for to keep you trained and keep you focused so you've always got an event coming up you know six or eight weeks away just to keep you getting out of bed keep you training keep you on it because that goal is just around the corner and it's not going away now when I say get it on the calendar, for me I use training peaks. Because when you put events on training peaks, it gives you a countdown, how many weeks until your next marathon, your next Ironman or 10K or 5K or whatever. You get a countdown on the desktop app, but also on your phone, if you get the phone app. You can see when the events are and you can start to build your training towards that. But I also use training peaks, not just for the events and for the training, but I also put dentist appointments in the notes, haircuts, when I'm away, what's going on, when I've got to pick people up or drop people off. I use it for so much more than just training. So every week when I'm looking at my training plan, I can see, I can sort of start to structure what times I can and can't do things. This Friday, for example, I've got a dentist appointment first thing, so my training will have to be later in the day. And it just starts to make you focus a little bit on when and how you're going to do that training. Because like a friend of mine said to me the other day, he's going to go for a 10 mile run, but then his wife had to be dropped to the train station and he couldn't do it. Well, for me personally, and I know it's not always this straightforward, but I would have, known about that, had it on the calendar in advance and probably done something like gone to, driven to the train station, dropped my partner off, parked at the train station, done a two, a two hour ride or an hour ride or a run from the train station, somewhere new and then be there ready to pick them up when they get home. So it's always a way of you know, making your training more exciting as well as just getting it done. Now if you've got training peaks, there are various options to you here. You can either get premium and add your own training sessions, you get the basic account, you can buy 
training plans online from Training Peaks. But this is where you can also utilise a coach and get the coach to add your sessions for you. So if you sign yourself up with a coach, they can help structure your week, give you your training plans, and you can also use them to fit you know, training plans towards your specific events, tailor things accordingly, and just start to build that week's plan in advance so you know what, what you've got to do and when. Something else you can do with training peaks that not a lot of people utilise is you can automatically sync it with your home like mail calendar or Apple calendar, whatever you want. There's an option in the settings to automatically push all of your training sessions onto your calendar. So if you have like a family calendar, you can share your training sessions to that and that helps keep those times free on the calendar. And something that works for me as well is if you're like a, a gym member or a pool member and you have to sign up for lane swimming or for yoga or fitness classes, when you sign up for those, I mean, I'm always looking a week ahead to make sure there's space and often they fill up quickly. So look well ahead, get yourself booked in to those classes, but then also those can be added to training peaks or to your calendar. There's normally an add to calendar option. So again, link those up and if you can't link it to training peaks put in a manual entry so it shows that you're doing yoga or body balance or strength whatever so once you've got all those unmovable fixed appointments in your calendar like the dentist or the haircut or the but dropping the wife at work um, your yoga sessions your swim sessions once all those unmovable things are in place you can start to structure all of your run or bike or movable sessions around those things that can't be moved. So for example for me today I'm booked in for a 12 o'clock swim and a 90 minute bike ride I've got to do as well so I made sure I got up in plenty of time to get some breakfast, get fueled up, to get the 90 minute ride done to allow me to get home, get changed and get to the pool in plenty of time. In terms of the sessions on the week I always try to not do too big hard days back to back. It's alright when you're a bit younger. I'm in my 50s, I have to look after myself. But I try not to do two big days back to back. So for example, today is a swim and a 90 minute steady ride. Yesterday I did a fairly hard uh, 75 minute run. Um, tomorrow I have got a CrossFit session and a swim. So I mix the days up, but try not to have two mega days back to back. I might have an easy run followed by a strength session or a long bike and a swim. Um, I try to avoid having a bike and a run on the same day until we get a bit closer to sort of triathlon season. And then I'll start bringing in the brick sessions. But today, but for now, it's just building up that week with a good balance across the week. Everything's scheduled in. I'm signed up for everything I need to be signed up for. I've started to plan where I'm going to do things. And so day by day, I know what's, what's coming up. So as I'm sure you've spotted, training is a massive part of my life. And so Training Peaks is the app or the web page I look at more than everything. I have a tab open on my laptop all the time. I'm always on the phone app, just looking sort of four, five, six days ahead, sometimes two weeks ahead, but just sort of adjusting and thinking about times checking things are going to be booked in. I'm never looking, you know, oh, what am I doing today? Because it's probably too late. Other things have probably cropped up. I have to be looking a week ahead, you know, fitting it in around life, making sure you're not going to get in trouble with your family. So fitting it in to cause the least disruption to everyday life. But just always tweaking and, you know, moving and adjusting and making sure the sessions fit together well doesn't take more than a minute or so each day if you keep on top of it keep looking ahead and that means like now when I'm the day before an early CrossFit session I'm already booked in I'm making sure I'm not do overdoing anything strength based today my meals will be on point so I'm fueled up nice and early and the same for today's swim session I booked in days ago I know it's been coming up I'm not gonna 
wake up this morning and think, oh, you know, I fancy a swim, because they're probably all booked up and I won't get in. So you've got to operate a few days ahead. And talking about always being a few days ahead, you know I'm going to say it. It's the, it's the most common way to scupper your training. Make sure you know where your kit is. Make sure you know where you put it. Get your kit ready the day before. I mean, I know I can't be the only one in this situation, but my two boys, 19 and 23, both just started running. And my 19 year old has also um, just restarted swimming. So they're always nicking my kit. They're always taking my running shoes, my shorts, base layers, gloves. They're always disappearing. So again, it's even more reason to make sure the day before that I know where my stuff is. It's been washed if they've used it. And I've got it ready to just pick up and go for that training session. And also buy them some of their own kit so they stop stealing mine. So in a nutshell, what I'm saying is plan your year ahead, know what your goals are, know what you want to achieve, find the events you want to do and get signed up to them. Then start building your plan month by month, week by week, make it accessible to the family so they all know what you're doing, make them understand the importance, get them on board, or board, on board with you to help you riding a bike while you run or vice versa and then start to build that week schedule so you know what you've got to do for the family where you've got to be for work and important stuff and then build your sessions around that so you don't feel guilty you don't miss anything important but you still get your training done once that's all done make sure your kit's where you need it to be be well rested, be fueled up, and you will smash those training sessions. The other thing with training peaks is when you do them, they go green on your plan. If you miss them, they go red. So we all want to see lots of green and no red. So I highly recommend giving training peaks a try for your training. And the final point, or I did briefly touch on it earlier, is if you're not sure about any of this, get yourself a coach. It's a massive, massive help. I have a coach, but I'm also a coach. I'm a level two running coach, a level two British triathlon coach. And I've been doing that for about 17, 18 years. So if you do want a hand, drop me a message. I'll be glad to help. And the final thing I would say was, like today's ride, I've seen so many friends out. I've just seen two people where um, a daughter and her dad She's doing couch to 5k, he's supporting her. I saw another friend running with a partner about two miles ago. I passed two friends at the beginning of my ride who'd obviously just finished a run. Get someone to do training with. Make such a difference. Agree to meet someone, you know, arrange to meet up, run or ride or swim or something, have a coffee or breakfast afterwards. Get other people involved. It's a massive, massive help. But there you go, that is my top tips for getting things done, particularly in these chilly months when motivation is low. And talking about motivation, don't give yourself a choice. Just get it scored, just get it scheduled, get it arranged, get your kit ready and do it. Don't second guess yourself. Just get out, get it done. You'll always, always, always feel better for doing it than if you don't do it. Anyway, I hope that helps. Let me know if I've missed anything or if there's any other uh, pointers to help. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, if you haven't already subscribed, please do drop us a like and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.